as a, as a young composer, Ives was one of my favorites, and cartoon music seemed to relate to Ives in some way in terms of quotation and, and different genres, everything being treated the same, the same slapstick kind of way. But, you know, a little bit of jazz would appear, classical would appear, all these different kinds of things would appear and, and really in a new way. And, and it was really kind of revelatory in a lot of ways um, and very inspiring. And uh, I used to tape, tape shit off the TV and I'd have all my little cassettes of uh, Road Runner was the best because there was no um, dialogue. I used to listen to it and, and just try to imagine it without the picture. And it was difficult because we're trained uh, from children to, to tie those sounds together. You hear that, 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 that. You hear someone going up the stairs. It's hard to, un, you know, but I tried to like, you know, listen to it as abstract music and learn something um, about musical form, maybe new ways of creating music, ways of breaking established ideas of musical development. Nothing is really developed in that music. Uh, what's developed is what you see on the screen. So there's a drama going on. The drama is played out. But to the director, the sound is secondary. To me, the sound was primary. So I tried to find some kind of, you know, analyze some kind of uh, new structures, and I think I, I, I learned a little bit about uh, new ways of putting sounds together by the analysis of what happens in Carl Stallings specific, it's Carl Stallings uh, cartoon music. And where's our drama? Hmm. Here. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the phone looking at all the letters he wrote it, me. It seems the harder I try and the closer I want to get. So it goes on like that? The more I drift away. Mm -mm. It's too early for that scene. Let's start again. Over the course of making music, I've learned to speak in many musical languages. And I think it's really important as a composer to speak to different musicians in their own terms and in their language. So the compositional process is imagining a music and communicating it to musicians. And whatever that communication is, is fine. If it means you gotta wrap it down to them, then you wrap it down to them. If it means you gotta tell them to, you know, play like a drunk falling downstairs, you tell them that. If it means you gotta write it down on paper, you write it down. Or anything in between. Uh, it's too regular, your crescendos and decrescendos. Should be more irregular. Wow. 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 Yeah, great. So it's more a bouncing between. Bouncing back and forth, yeah. With them. Yeah. And also, whenever the, those wind machine where you stop it with the hand, uh, that was perfect. You should do that same thing um, earlier when you use the wind machine and you stop it. small little thoughts right. that add up to one idea yeah. and it's got to sing and, and kind of tell a story it's got to be expressive but it doesn't bother me that sometimes those ideas are separated from one another that's, okay, that's my question. yeah it doesn't bother. no I, I think I think it'll work I think it'll work I think it'll still tell the story mm -hmm. John Zorn. I'm at um, Tucker's today, a mastering play. Oh, which record are you doing? The, the Morricone record. Um, I think it'd be good for you to come and film. This is a perfect opportunity. Tucker Studio Uptown? Yeah. 
Um, that sounds great. I'll take the end train and be right there. That'd be great. Okay. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Going towards the percussion. Going towards it. In here. Everything goes through the Zorn filter in some strange way. Um, even if I try to copy something exactly, like Bernard Herrmann is one of my favorite composers of all time, and there's an element of Bernard Herrmann in almost all of my music, it's there. Sometimes it's very obvious, a set of, you know, rotating triads um, rising in major thirds is just cycling and cycling and cycling. And you hear it in Psycho, you hear it in Vertigo, you hear it in almost all of his music, and you hear it in a lot of moments of my music. trying to copy it exactly, I, I can't copy it exactly. It becomes something else. And also in, in involving other people and having, say, Bill Frizzell play them, he puts his weird twist on it. He puts his voicings on it. So it's not just me, but getting other people involved in transforming something and making it something else. I mean, the, the Morricone record could be used as an example of that, of taking someone's music and making it my own. It's actually, it's all boosted the eight. Okay. So this is correct relative. Let's take a look at this track. This track should be cool all the way through. Yeah, it's like a big crescendo. Seems cool, right? This volume? Yeah. an ambience overall to the whole record? It was a little bit condensed. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, not going up. If we can give a, you know, some kind of ambience to give a, just a touch of air yeah. or something on, on top, yeah, yeah. that will be helpful. Okay. Well, let's try it and see yeah. how it feels. Okay. Let's just go one, two, three. Through. Sicilian. what I'm thinking. Yeah, let's turn up the volume. Try to imagine it. Try without. to imagine it. Try without to imagine it without the picture. Oh no.
no. Shit. Hello? Hey, how are you? Listen, I got this new record. Amazing music. Wait, I'll play it for you. Can you hear it? Sounds great, but I have a sort of water disaster going on here. It's dripping all over the place. I have to call you back. Oh. Okay. Bye. It's some years later now, and I believe things would not be the way they are if I hadn't listened to that record back then. They would have developed in some other direction, and I wouldn't be where I am now. I'm amazed, really, at what a single moment can do. Most of my work involves the manipulation of musical blocks, uh, moments, which is something that Stravinsky was famous for and something that Stockhausen uh, maybe took another step um, in moment form. Each moment is uh, complete in itself, uh, like building blocks. And the moments are positioned uh, one after the other in a linear fashion, so that it ends up telling a story. So, where to? To Queens, where he grew up. Ah, so that's where the story begins. Well, that's where one story begins. Isn't it strange? You can find the place where he comes from, but you can't find him. Hmm, that remains to be seen. Ah, here we are. So, this is what actually happened. By plan or chance, who knows? But I've collected thousands of moments and now I'd like to connect them together and make a story out of them. My idea is to subdivide the film into 12 sections, one of which I'd like to name The Past. We're talking about blocks again, about things that change in block format. And the theater of musical optics kind of um, tried to deal in a poetic way with um, the ordering of different events. Jewel Avenue. Is this the street? It doesn't look like a place where a kid would make music with vacuum cleaners and howl at the full moon, does it? Hello. Didn't his mother put him under psychiatric observation for a while? Hello. Well, he certainly did have some unusual ideas. I began developing this theory that music does not actually sound itself, but a way of manipulating sound, a certain aesthetic. And is it possible to then work with a visual medium in a musical way? Can you make a film that's music? Or what is that then? Was it decided back then already what my path would look like? And his? I created my own place to play. If I had to play in my apartment, I played in my apartment. I put posters up myself, you know, in 1974 in New York. And uh, sometimes I put them uh, underneath cars. Sometimes I put them up after the show was over. In fact, I started to believe that that was the best way to do it because you get the promotion, but they wouldn't hear the music. They'd see your name, but they didn't see how sick it was. I just started playing. <laughs> one section of the film I'd like to name the present and another one the future.
Is this what the future looks like? If the present is a moment, maybe the future is imagination, while the past is memory. One section I want to name about sound, which will be a sequence with sound only and a black screen. And another one I will name about time. The system could last for five seconds or it could last for five minutes. How long is a minute? How long is a second? How long is one moment? How many moments make one second? Does one moment ever happen twice? Time is not only a linear progression of amounts, it's a more vertical conception, an energy that appears immediately everywhere and can be collected, balanced and regenerated in pockets of information. So what it really is like, it's a small improvising group for X number of seconds. Yeah, okay. When the downbeat happens, there's three people playing. What they're doing right at the beginning of that moment doesn't have to stay for the whole 10, 15 seconds. Yeah. It can develop and you can improvise together. I, I, but it's good to see how long we're going. You can gauge the length of each piece yeah. by watching the clock. try to imitate the sound of other people. Mm -hmm. It should be just random events that mm -hmm. you just choose on your own mm -hmm. without listening to the other mm -hmm. people. And uh, remember, downbeats are about either stopping what you're doing mm -hmm. or coming in if you haven't, if you're right. not playing, you can right. come in. Or if you're playing, you can change your music in it, but it has to be very radical. So let's begin. <laughs> Time actually. 
Can it be stretched or bent? Probably move it again, but something. 